Hey guys, Ajax22 here, continuing on with the uh, figuring out what to do on those steampunk guns. I came up with something to use that cut uh, World War I 1916 pattern Colt front end. At least, oh, sorry, 1918, I think, uh, based on the what's left of the roll markings. Um, you know, back in the day, for a long slide gun, the way they'd do that was by cutting up one slide and weld it on the front of another, pretty much. It's, uh, you section it. You cut it, cut it here, cut it here, and you, this one you take off from here to here, and then the other front section. So you, we should be able to, you know, weld the four pieces back together, and that's pretty straightforward. You know, cut it, mill it so it's perfectly flat, set it up on a jig, and have it TIG welded. A little bit higher, um, rebuild the metal a little bit higher. There's no rails in this portion of the slide, so uh, as long as it's straight, um, it should be should be pretty good. And as long as the the exterior is, um, you know, is, the weld is strong, and the exterior is uh, a little bit higher than the the metal, it should be able to be surface ground back down and um, it may have some interesting striping and discoloration from from the metal uh, being a little bit different alloy, different hardness when you do the parkerizing on it. But uh, you know, it, it should should look pretty good. Um, yeah, so that way we can keep this um, crazy, you know, water cooled looking. <laughs> I don't know what this thing is is actually there for. Um, it's the strangest muzzle. Uh, weight I've ever seen. Um, but we can keep this and then have that on the end of a long slide setup. Um, the same dust cover type that we were going to use in gun 2, uh, we're going to use in this one. So this will be a brass piece that's supported underneath the barrel. Um, you know, Basically, on you know, hanging from the uh, the recoil assembly in the rear, and possibly uh, on there from the pin. I haven't fully got that figured out, but I will. Um, yeah, the other thing I wanted to do was sort of uh, do the the PPSH forty three, you know, milled holes through the gun, so you can see the inner workings uh, in it. Um, it shouldn't compromise function. Everything that's done forward of the uh, the lugs, punch it through the side. You'll have a lot of real estate to work with. Um, you know, put a nice little chamfer on the edges of the holes, lay them out nice and clean. Maybe do an intermediary one that's just I mean, the top edge of the holes should all be lined up, and then you know it doesn't look like that here obviously because I'm not the world's world's greatest drawing guy, but. Uh, yeah, you know, make it so that it it steps up on the bottom. So that'll be a, there'll be another one here with the bottom edge on the on the just the same distance as these from the the curved part. Um, on the on the rest of the gun, very very clean. I think we're gonna do either panel grips that are just completely solid brass or Hmm. Maybe some uh, some just round holes punched through. I think that might be a good look on this gun. Um, you know, three or four. I think we'd have enough room for. It's at its widest point. These things are, I think, uh, inch and a half, almost um, measured against the uh, the straight edge. So we could do some one inch holes, maybe. That might be a little thin up top. It's hard to say. We should still be. We're still going to do the the four grip bushings. Um, going to try to make them so that any set of grips can work on on any gun, except obviously the visible loading one. I might just do the the right side grip different on all these and leave the left side the exact same visible one, so that all the mags work the same. All the all the left side grips are the same. I think that's. I think that could just be kind of cool. It's a little more work. But it's it's really cool. Um, yeah, 
going to have to track down a lot of parts. Um, probably take one of the existing barrels and then uh, pin and weld an extension on it so that it can come out to, uh, you know, flush. Um, and it might be kind of cool to actually turn this uh, muzzle extension thing into a water tight chamber. I don't know. Um, I'm a little worried about putting any sort of space in there, even if the barrel sticks out all the way, because the, you know, if we if we drop a liner in there, the, the it looks an awful lot like other things you're not supposed to have, even though it would absolutely not work, <laughs> especially considering, you know, look if you look at the uh, construction on this, it's basically solid and inletted to uh, clear the slide, so yeah, it, it. I just wouldn't want to have any misconceptions or misunderstandings with with certain agencies that don't like that sort of thing. Um, you know, so best best just keep it solid. Although it would be awfully nice to have an actual water cooled 1911. That would just be ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Um, yeah, that's going to be an awful lot of weight either way on that slide. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that's going to unlock. We might have to do quite a bit of uh, slicking up work to make this thing run. I just don't know. But definitely going to go and salvage that tip of that old Colt. You know, weld it onto this, uh, you know, Series 70 front end and turn it into a pretty slick gun. I'm looking forward to this one. We're going to we're going to obviously not use the threaded portion of this and this little uh, bushing that was created or will become get bored out and act as a spacer right there. Um, the recoil assembly is going to probably have to be set up special on this gun. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to do that. We've got a lot of room to work with in the uh, the front end area here. But um, yeah, not not sure how that's going to work. A lot, of, a lot of things we're going to have to figure out as we're building this. Anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's gun number three. It's going to be the long slide. I'm really looking forward to this one. I may I may actually be looking forward to this one more than some of the ones that are set up ahead of it. Um, there's a, I have a tendency to work on whatever I have the parts for that uh, are in hand. So if there's work to be done and there's a machine shop to do it in, and you know my buddies are feeling, uh, <laughs> you know, like it's something to do, then uh, that's what we do. This is this is going to be a lot of work, but uh, man, it's going to be cool when it's done. I'm really looking forward to it. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to get going. Have a good one.